It's Ron Goodall from FightHype.com. I'm here with Brandon Lee, 20 wins, 18 KOs. Um, you have a, a fight coming up Saturday, December 19th, uh, underneath the Showtime card with, you know, a lot of great talent, world championship kind of level fights. And uh, how are you feeling first and foremost going into this fight week? Feeling good. Um, you know, as always, feeling good, looking good. Feeling sharp and uh, I'm ready to go do what I, what I do best. Now, um, for the fight fans, uh, they want to see your fight. Where where can we see um, on on Saturday? Um, all you gotta do is, is you do three ways actually. Go to my Twitter, go to my Instagram, and click the link in my bio, or you can just go on YouTube and search up Showtime Sports. And uh, I believe the fight starts at six forty five Eastern time. So go ahead and just click the click the uh, link. And then it'll take you straight there, and it'll say live streaming. And then you can see me fight right there. Now, um, going into this fight, um, what do you know about your opponent? Uh, is it Dakota Linger? Um, yeah. It looks like he's, he has a, a pretty good, you know, he has a winning record. Um, what do you know about him and, 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 and where he um, fits? Into I know that. I know he's a adorable guy. I mean, he may not look, look the part. Um, I actually posted a picture on my Instagram of him. A couple, couple minutes ago, and you got people saying that um, it's easy. It's oh, you're gonna knock him out, but you know I can't over. I got I can't underestimate anybody because at the end of the day, he got two hands. He got hurt me. I got two hands. I got hurt him. And uh, but his last fight, he won the distance with the because with someone who's considered a hot prospect. So we know that he's durable. He can take a punch. So um, I'm looking for what I I can do too. You know, uh, you've been extremely active, you know, this year and, and coming into the whole pandemic, the bubble experience. Have you kind of yeah. got it cus accustomed to this whole process? You know, I know some fighters are still kind of learning or is this still kind of yeah. like a, about the fans and everything? Um, Man, the bubble sucks, but, you know, I, I'm not going to be locked up in a room. Like, I, because what I do is I eat and I got to walk around because if I eat and just chill in the room, I'm in – my food ones I just right, so I got to eat and walk around. So I either eat, walk around somewhere, or walk around in the hallway. But you know, um, I'm not a fan of the bubble at all. And and, and um, seeing the fact that this this experience has probably been uh, something that you just want to be done with in 2020. If you get past this opponent Saturday night, is the plans in 2021 to hopefully get out of the bubble, have some fans, and aim towards like a a possible world title shot in, in the near future? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, um, I think I have one more. This may be my last fight before I go for a world title. You know, um, 2021, I'm going, I'm, I am going for a world title. And uh, it's going to be some, some that um, – one of my many goals that will be completed. Now, um, one thing I, I've noticed, you know, the, the 140 division, it's, it's, it's very, very loaded with a lot of talent. Um, a lot of great matchups for you in the near future. Would a performance Saturday entice some of those guys to want to maybe call out Brandon Lee? Um, or, or would they still look at you maybe as like a, a high risk, you know, not so much the rewards worth facing a, a touted prospect or future contender, um, future champion? I feel like they'll probably look at me and be like, um, that kid, that kid's like whatever, you know, mm -hmm. that kid's, uh, that kid's all right. Um, oh, he has good speed. Oh, he has good power. But they don't. They they won't look at me like, damn, he might actually beat me. He might be a threat. Because I f I feel like I'm always I'm always underestimated. I don't know why. And um, it is what it is. But until they fight me, until I hit them, until they see my my speed up close in person, then it's a different story. Now, um, going to Saturday, the performance you had previously, essentially. The whole boxing community saw the constant right yeah. hand knockdown. Um, are we? You think that we're going to be able to see something that uh, that that fight wasn't able to show that you're capable of doing, uh, or maybe you might be a man, repeat. Man, I don't know. For some reason, I touch somebody. As soon as my hands touch somebody, they fall down. So <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully, I mean, um, I might throw some body work in there. I might throw some uppercuts in there. I might throw a left hook in there. Throw a jab, right hand. I don't know. All depends how I'm feeling. All depends what's what's available, and um, if it's not available, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I can make available. Now, um, a beautiful brotherhood kind of thing I've noticed from the previous fights to this 
is that I, I got a chance to talk to your boy Jerron earlier to, uh, yeah. yesterday, and yeah. we, he spoke very highly of you. You know, we talked about the rush hour pact that you guys yeah. have, and and um, he really, really speaks very highly of you. And seeing well, the fact yeah. that, oh, go ahead. That's my boy. You know, he's out here right now. Tomorrow night, he's going for a world title, the IBO World Championship, and um, he's fighting a tough veteran. And then I, I know the, the these top guys already don't want to fight Boots. Tomorrow, once once Boots puts a whipping on on his opponent, man, ain't nobody gonna want to fight him <laughs> because I mean, Boots is really something special. He can turn lefty, righty, speed, power, uh, good defense. So he got it all. You know, I, I know that you're going to be watching, you know, Jerron. I'm sure you guys maybe talked when you were, you know, in the hotel. I'm sure Jerron's going to yeah. be watching you, rooting for you, um, wherever he's at within the bubble. Um, at this point, would you kind of list you guys as the, the top future 140 and the top 147 uh, fighters of the division? Because seeing that people may underestimate you, they might underestimate Jerron. Do, yeah. do you guys kind of talk about that and boost each other up? And um, No, we don't talk about that. But, um, of course, I'm sure he's thinking it, that he's the best at 147. And, of course, I'm thinking I'm the best at 140. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there, uh, prospects, world champions, that are fighting 140. And they don't fucking – to be honest, they don't deserve to be on TV. They don't deserve mm. to be in the spot they are because, in reality, I mean, uh, people want to see knockouts. People want to see something different. People don't want to see two guys jumping around. I hit you, you hit me, you know. Your turn, my turn. People want to see damage. So that's what I'm here for. That's what I want to give people, you know, anything in my way, I'm seeing, I'm seeing to destruct. So that's what I do best, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. And, you know, you, you, you've been pretty good with these predictions, minus the Lomachenko, Lopez, you yeah. know, that's a, um, you've been nailing everything across the board right there. Do, do you have a prediction for the uh, either the, the, the Canelo and Callum Smith fight that's going to – yeah, um, I'm sure this one. I'm sure everybody else is already thinking it too. Um, I see Canelo catching Smith with a, a body shot. Um, I feel. I mean, he's too damn tall. I hit him in the head, so he's probably gonna go to the body, kill the body. And uh, I don't know if Canelo. I'm sure Canelo stops him. To be honest, I, I don't really know 100 percent about Callum Smith, but I hear he's a good boxer and good speed, good power. But um, if Keno stops him, it's going to be by a body shot or uppercut. And, and, and seeing that height difference, like as a boxing yeah. fan, it's huge. Did you ever like spar anyone or um or compete in amateurs of something like that huge difference before? Yeah, definitely. My last sparring partner from my last camp, and uh, we actually used him again for this camp. His name is Kevin. Um, uh, he's out in Palmdale. Sam Contreras is his trainer and manager. And uh, he's he's one hell of a sparring partner. He's like, psh, like six four, mm. but he's tall. He got some inches on me, and uh, he's great work. And um, he's like a machine. He don't stop. How do you, how do you neutralize someone, or at least fight with someone? Obviously, maybe you don't want to give them the reach advantage. But yeah. how would you fight a tall guy? What, what would you have to take away from them that Canelo may have to? Um, to be honest. I feel like I can't put myself in Canelo's shoes. Canelo is one hell of a fighter, but at the same time, um, I'm not sure if, he, if – I'm actually, I've never seen him do it, so maybe he could, maybe he can't. But for me personally, I mean, I could – for whenever I fight a tall person, I either walk them down and don't give them a reach, but at the same time, I could outbox the taller opponent. So uh, if Canelo could do that, I'm sure he could because he has one – he has – his defense is on point. Uh, his counters are on point. So that's what I would do is um, either outbox him or take it to him. Mm. And, um, you know, throughout all of this, you know, boxing talk, I just have to just bring up, you know, you're getting, you know, a lot of uh, attention through the community, through the, through the Asian yeah. community. I noticed that you were at the Kinjas podcast. I don't know if some yeah, people yeah. aren't hip to the American Best Dance crew, but that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. How did that kind of come about and just seeing – you know, you've been, you know, getting these, what they send you these like packages and stuff I saw through Instagram. Yeah. Um, one of the head dudes actually reached out to me and I was like, damn, who's this? And I looked up, bro, I was like, damn, they're like the job walkies. <laughs> so uh, that was crazy. And uh, yeah, they sent me a few, few, few of their, mer their merch, some hats, some sunglasses, some shirts. Uh, and then 
like two weeks later, they sent me like a package full of like their own noodles that they created. So that oh, was super man. dope. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to eat them though because I've been <laughs> on this diet. So as soon as I get back home, that's the first thing I'm eat. You're gonna send the video. You open up the box, just smashing yeah. through. And... <laughs> well, uh, look, I know that you know you're in the bubble, give you time to relax and everything like that. Um, just wanted to give you an opportunity to tell the fans or any last minute things um, before we let you go. Um, what we should expect and and any social media and things of that nature. Um. First of all, I want to tell all my fans, thank you for all the support. I mean, especially the Asian community. Um, really, my last fight, I had so many Asian celebrities reach out to me um, in the in the business world, in the tech world, in the fashion world, in the rap world. So many, all the Asian celebrities. So thank you for all your support. Thank you to all the Asian, the Asian community in general. Thank you. And um, tune in tomorrow night on Showtime Sports on the YouTube channel to watch me put in work. 21 and 0 coming soon. Awesome. Well, look, I appreciate the time. Looking forward to speaking with you after the fight. Yeah, likewise. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ron.